So if you have pubic bone pain and you think it's osteitis pubis, what else could it be? You might have stumbled upon this video because you watched my osteitis pubis video, but this is basically an explanation of all the other things you have to rule out in addition to osteitis pubis when you're suspecting osteitis pubis. Because like we mentioned in the other video, it's kind of a rare diagnosis and oftentimes it's uh, given as a diagnosis of exclusion, which means somebody might have missed something else. So this pubic symphysis joint is the one that we're talking about, this one right here, kind of the front area of in between your hips and there's a little disc here. This joint doesn't move a whole heck of a lot and it's um, not one of your, it's a weight bearing joint but it's not one of your major like weight load bearing joints um, in terms of like it doesn't have direct impact or contact with the ground, it's indirect through the rest of the pelvic ring and the hips. This joint can have, um, you can get pain in this joint as a referral from a lumbar spine disc. That's actually a pretty common thing that people see. Um, the lumbar discs are right here. They are um, these little squishy jelly-like things. You also have a disc here, like I said. So those lumbar spine joints, uh, discs in the, in the middle of the joints, um, those can have a lot of pain with sitting. So if you notice a lot of pain in your pubic region that hurts mostly with sitting but not with moving, I would suspect a disc a little bit more. And then in that case, you'd actually want to follow a low back rehab plan instead of a pubic symphysis rehab plan, although there might be some overlaps in strength, tr strength exercises for both of those. Um, also, there are these little nerves right here that come out of the spine and will actually wrap into this pelvic bowl here. And sometimes those can kind of get inflamed as they cross over the pubic symphysis joint. And uh, those will actually be tender to the touch often. So it can feel like an osteitis pubis presentation because it hurts when you touch it. Um, and those will hurt with various different movements um, or positions as well. So you want to rule out that it could be spinal based too, because if you don't treat the spine and it's spinal nerve based, or if you don't treat the nerve and it's nerve based, then you're going to continue to have pain and be frustrated and wonder why you're taking time off your activities and things aren't, rest isn't helping and why it isn't getting better. Um, if rest isn't helping and it's a joint based injury, then you're probably missing something. So if you think it's a joint based like osteitis pubis issue and you've taken weeks and weeks away from your activity and have just been resting and it's not helping, you want to look at something else going on. Um, also, Hip joint pathologies, such as a labral tear or a hip impingement. So hip joint pathologies can also refer pain into the groin area and can almost feel like pubic pain. Um, that's a little far over for those pathologies, but it's possible. Usually the groin pain that you would feel with a hip labrum or a hip impingement uh, would be a little bit further away from the center, whereas, you know, a lot of times people who think they have osteitis pubis or who actually do, it'll be right in the, it'll be really close to the middle of this uh, pubic area. So it'll be more here versus here. But sometimes those hip pathologies can actually refer pain over to these areas. So if you have any pain possibly in the hips too, if you have any popping, clicking or locking in the hips that goes along with that, you might want to consider that. Or if you have pain here with deep squatting, you might want to consider that it could be, um, hip joint pathology such as a labral tear or a hip impingement. Some of those things could also, like the pain with deep squatting could also, could also be disc um, or nerve based as well. But if you have the popping and clicking and hip joint pain or if you have a prior history of those things, um, that's something that you wanna think about as well as a prior history of back pain can also point you towards maybe a disc or nerve presentation as well. Um, if you're somebody who's in a endurance sport such as you know trail running or if you do triathlons or something like that anything where you're doing a lot like high energy output per day um, you might want to consider having a bone injury in that area it's very rare but if there is a big discrepancy in injury or energy that you're taking in and energy that you're expending with exercise whether it's purposeful or not, um, even if you're not trying to diet or lose weight, sometimes it just happens if you're training a lot, um, you can have that energy deficiency and that can actually kind of wear away on these bones. This is a very uncommon area to uh, have a, you know, a bone stress response or a stress fracture. 
But if you are somebody who's severely on that energy deficiency scale, even if you don't know it, that could be the case. If you have a prior history of bone injuries and you fit into that other category of like, you know, high energy output, then you could, you could be more likely to have an actual bone injury here. So that's more for my endurance athlete folks. Um, like I said, this isn't like a direct impact bone. So it's a lot more common to get a, a lot more common to get a bone stress injury somewhere else first. Um, unless you're kind of on the severe energy deficiency scale. So that's also a possibility. You want to look into the idea too that you could have had, you know, a very severe adductor or um, abdominal muscle tear or um, kind of strain in that area. Usually it's not going to be a strain. Sometimes it could be, but usually it has to be something a little bit more severe to actually cause pain in this area. Um, you could have a bone avulsion if you had like a very severe tear where the, you know, bone was actually pulled off by the muscle. Um, or you could have, you know, bone pulling off on the muscle as the, um, as your bone is kind of starting to go into a stress fracture state. So it's, if it's already kind of in that um, low energy um, intake, high energy output kind of time, and then you're also pulling a lot on it, sometimes the bone can kind of get pulled away. Uh, so that's a possibility too. And then also, you know, a lot of times people with a lot of like, you know, adductor strains or tears or abdominal muscle strains or tears will also kind of have pain in this pubic region just because there's an attachment point there. And then finally, the last kind of more common injury that could show up as pain in this region that is not osteitis pubis is potentially a sports hernia. Um, some people out there can definitely feel sports hernia pain kind of in this area. Um, that's a bigger, broader topic that needs kind of more of an entire video to itself. But if you have a lot of pain with potentially like abdominal activation or adductor activation, you're an athlete or you've been an athlete and, you know, maybe especially if you're moving heavy loads or you're bearing down and kind of squeezing in that area and you've noticed pain in that area or something kind of protruding, it could be a sports hernia. So that's also a possibility for pain in this region. This is a pretty exhaustive list of all the other things that osteitis pubis type pain could be. So if you're looking to see if you have a diagnosis of osteitis pubis, definitely wanna make sure that you rule out the majority of these things too, either with testing or you know history. A good provider will know to rule out all these things. So make, make sure you go ahead and get this worked up if you think you have osteitis pubis. Um, I'm here to answer any questions. If you have anything, uh, you can just drop a comment below email me. My description um, has my email and my website info. And if, subscribe if you want to see a little bit more about osteitis pubis or any more of these uh, sports type injuries. My channel has lots of sports injury rehab ideas and information. So thank you guys. I hope this was informative to you and I hope you have a great day.